Hello and welcome to Forest Tech, year 2021. I plan to start a new year with a new custom build that is going to be focused towards high performance and gaming. For my first choice as a motherboard, I picked up ASUS Prime X570P. For the processor, I picked AMD Ryzen 3700X that comes with its own RGB RAF cooler. Cables, one of which connects to USB 3 port and another cable which connects to the RGB header. And then I plug the braided fan cable to the chassis fan header, assuring safety clamps and clips. Now time to put in some memory. I picked a pair of Corsair Vengeance LPX to get a total RAM of 32GB. Had to put in a standoff so that I can install the Corsair's Force Series MP510 240GB NVMe PCIe. This will speed up boot up times, program's performance and overall system read write speeds. Next comes the casing and for that I went with Leon Lee's Lancool 2. It's an ATX mid tower casing and the reason why I picked it up is because it's really really flexible when it comes to building up a custom PC. You can almost disassemble an entire casing and be as flexible while building your PC. And it's extremely spacious. After looking everywhere in the packing box, I finally found out all the essential fixing screws, cable ties, wraps and stuff in the box inside one of the hard drive bays. Taking off some more panels to create some room for motherboard and to reveal casing cables that includes top power control panel and RGB cables. Also at the bottom you have rubber pads and removable dust filter. Inside you get three 120mm fans, one on back and top and one at the front. Time to install the motherboard IO shield and then the motherboard. I didn't need any standoffs to install the motherboard on this casing, so just the screws in, nice and tight. Casing cables include fan cables and top panel wires including power, reset, audio, USB 3 cable, addressable LED and PSU cable. So I connected addressable LED wire, then the power reset switches. For the USB 3 I had two points but for better cable management I chose to slide it from top right and connect to the second header that's near the CPU header on the motherboard. To power up the PC I picked up Corsair's RM850 for three main reasons. It's 850 watts which is essentially more than what I'm gonna need. It's an 80 plus gold certified power supply. Fully modular so you don't need to have all the wires in your PC. You can use the ones that you need and unplug the ones that you don't and maybe just plug them back in as and when needed. I started connecting 24 pin ADX cables and CPU cable. Then the PCIe cable for the graphics card and SATA cable to power up hard disk and SSD drives. Talking about SSD, I picked Kingston A400 480 GB black SSD which can be attached to these removable panels. Can also be attached to these removable tray in case you wish to keep it concealed. Struggling trying to fit in the power supply along with its cables, gladly the casing allowed shifting the entire drive bay and create more ample space for cabling and modding needs.
power supply in place, time to install a 7200 RPM hard drive for a decent storage capacity for games. Based on my early experience, which has been great, I once again went with Seagate's 4TB IronWolf Pro that comes with its free 2-year data recovery plan, in case of problems. So for the GPU, I picked up Gigabyte's RTX 2060 Super. It comes with 8GB of video RAM and it's an overclocking WinForce edition. I removed the back panel strips and installed the GPU. Nice and firm. I then attached the 8-pin PCIe cable coming from the power supply to power up the GPU. Then the 8-pin CPU connection and the 24-pin connection to power up the motherboard with power supply. Finally, the audio cable from the top panel of casing and the casing's fans. Powered up SSD and hard drives from the power supply. Then connect both of these SSD and hard drives using the SATA cables that came with the motherboard. And then connected the casing with the power supply. And everything seems to be connected now. A bit of cable management to align wires and make things look organized. I felt like swapping the SSD from right to left panel. Just looks better this way. Time to close the bottom panels. Motherboard panel. Conceal the casing's wirings. And back goes on the tempered glass panel. Close this off, the front panel goes back to where it belongs. So that's all we've got time for today. I'm going to be bringing up the details, reviews and feedbacks of all these components and the PC along with its benchmark in the future episode. If you like what you see, then a thumbs and like would always be crunchy. I'll see you in the next video. Till again, Forest Tech, signing out.